I know He will supply all of my needs and satisfy me according to His riches in glory. Today, we are making progress in our series on financial peace. And today, I want to talk to you on what I titled Joseph's Principle of Financial Prosperity. Why are we talking about financial peace? That a time will come, you will not worry about money again. You will have what we call financial peace. You will not be wondering, where will the next food come from? Because it's already there. I say it's already there. Glory be to God. Those who are rich, their pregnancy was also nine months. Are you with me? Yes. They are not abnormal. They are normal, regular human beings. But they have taken some principles and applied them and it has worked with them. They have related with the right people who gave them wisdom, soul wisdom to them and they used those wisdom and they arose and you shall arise. Hallelujah. So today we're talking about Joseph's principle of financial prosperity. I like to start by telling you a story. I like stories. I watched this documentary by one Mrs. Adeola. I can't remember her husband's name. She's a journalist in America. She profiled this young man who was born in a very, very poor family. Nobody had ever been rich in his family. He came to Lagos and the only accommodation he could find was church. He was sleeping in church. And then was doing bus conductor in the daytime. But he had a principle he never broke. Every night he would read for two hours. Every night he must read at least for two hours. After 12 years of doing that conductor job, he was able to pass his GCE. Praise God. And with time, he got admission to the University of Ibadan to study his first degree with scholarship. So he got his first degree. As soon as he finished his first degree, he put in for a second degree. And while he was doing his second degree, he got admission to read abroad. Again, he got scholarship and moved abroad. As at the time I watched that documentary, that man had become an international speaker. And he started from nowhere, from minus, 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 minus. Praise God. Hallelujah. If God can change his story, he can change your story. He can change your story. Joseph saved the nation from collapse and ruin. One principle from one man. Saved a whole nation from collapse, from total collapse. How did he save the nation? God was so kind to have revealed to Pharaoh what was going to come to his nation. He gave him a dream. And there was nobody to interpret the dream. Do you know it's going to happen to somebody here? That a problem we arose or we arise, it's only you that can solve it. Oh, say a better amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's how men rise. They say, go and look for him. <laughs> Praise God. So, this man had a dream and nobody could interpret it. They went to look for Joseph. How did Joseph come about being in Egypt? Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery. And the slave masters took him to Egypt and one of the ruling officers bought him as a slave. And the Bible says, I love this, Genesis chapter 39 verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to prosper in Joseph's hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he had put under his authority. So it was from that time that he had made him overseer of his house 
and all that they had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. So, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and did not know what he had except for the bread he ate. I mean, you can see promotion in the life of this young man. First of all, the Lord was with him. And the Bible says, because the Lord was with him, he, be, he was successful in all that he did. A slave was successful in all that he did. And when his master saw that everything in the hand of day, this man prospered, and he was being blessed because of this man, the Bible says he committed the whole, his whole business into his hand. He said, take control. And he was prospering. May you prosper also. But the key, I, I don't want us to lose sight of this first key. The Lord was with him. May the Lord be with you. Amen. May you be with the Lord. Amen. How many people have worked in companies and they ruined the company. They will steal the time of the company. They will steal the money of the company. They will steal anything they can steal from the company. But this young man got into that company and changed the company for good. In those days, I, I, they used to tell us that when companies were looking for people to hire in those days, they go to church. The pastor, we need this. We need this kind of people to, to, to employ. Do they come to church anymore? Why? The church has become like the world and the world has become like the church. No difference. Whereas there should be a difference. That where you walk, people should recognize you. That you are a child of God. That you are a child of God. That you carry oil on your hair. That you are a covenant child. That anything you touch should change for good. Are you with me? Hey, come on. God will prosper you simply because you are the seed of Abraham. Jesus said, shouldn't that woman be healed being the seed of Abraham? That's your qualification, my brother. Your qualification for prosperity, for moving ahead of your mates, is that you are of the seed of Abraham. See, I'm of the seed of Abraham. Oh, Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Don't ever remove God from your equation. Don't ever say, this is business. Business is business. Church is church. No. Don't do that. Let God guide and guard you. Because from him come wisdom. From him come might. Glory be to God. Fear God, obey God, walk with God and see what God will do in your life. Where people are failing, you will succeed there. You will succeed there. People will be wondering, how are you doing it? The secret is that God is with you and you are with God. <laughs> Amen. Alright, so Joseph eventually found himself in the prison. <laughs> he was just coming down, 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 but he still would not forsake God. Right in prison, he was still ministering to people, interpreting dreams. How many people stop serving God because of one little problem? They stop coming to church because of one little problem. You don't know that that problem, God allowed into your life so as to use it to lift you up. He was wrongly accused was thrown into the prison, and prison was still interpreting dreams for his fellow prisoners. In fact, we were even told, the Bible says, that the prisoner, the warder, left the prison management in his hand. Again, he saw, he saw grace in his life. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Then Pharaoh had this dream. Nobody could interpret. But because Joseph had been interpreting dreams, they said, let's call him. He should be able to interpret this one also. What have you been doing that people can call you for? That people can reference you for? Huh? Somebody in this church, I won't mention his name. He didn't know that a company was looking for a job. In London, they had a meeting. They had a meeting, and the meeting, they decided that he should be called for interview. He didn't know anything about the job. He has never been to London since he was born, but a decision was taken in London to call him for interview, and that's the job he's doing right now. 
Why? He, uh, he has a good track record. Has a good track record. And he has not disappointed them. Joseph told Pharaoh, they see, those fat cows you saw and those lean cows that you saw, they represent seven different years. The fat cows, the year of plenty. The lean cows, the year of hardship. But the dream said that the, the lean cows ate up the fat cows. I mean, can you imagine? Who would have thought it's the fat one that would eat the lean one? But it's the lean one that ate up the, old, the fat ones. He said, what is going to happen will be such that after the years of plenty and the years of suffering, of scarcity comes in, nobody will remember the year of plenty again because the suffering will be so much. It will consume all the years of plenty. Pharaoh now said, please, what, what, what do we do? What do we do? He said to Pharaoh, during the years of plenty, save 20% of all the crops of the land. How many percent? How many percent? Save 20 Say, so keep saving every year 20%. Every year 20%. Every year 20%. So when the year of scarcity came, it was all those 20, 20%. They now brought out that saved the whole nation and the nations around Egypt. That's why I call it Joseph's principle. Joseph's principle says, hey, come on. When you are making money, save 20%. I read the story of, a, of a, a Nigerian captain, military captain that has retired several years ago. This man worked with Buhari. He worked with Obasanjo. He worked with uh, Babangida. And he's a beggar today. How can such a man be a beggar for heaven's sake? Because when he was in service, he was earning good money, I want to believe. He probably was in a good posting and making money, but he did not save. And he thought things would continue like that. Then suddenly he was retired. And that was the end of him. He became a beggar. You will not become a beggar. Amen. Listen hard to me today. This is the principle that creates wealth. The principle that will make you buy land. The principle that will make you buy houses. The principle that will bail you out. The principle that will guarantee a good future for you. It's called saving money. Oh, is that what you want to talk about, man of God? I don't even have enough. You are telling me to save. That is the reason you should save. So that you can have more. If 90% of what you earn cannot take you to the next month, 100% will not take you there. Did you hear what I said? Assuming I'm asking you to save 10%. I say, no, I can't save 10%. I'll eat all my 100. Then you have no future. Can I be honest with you? The only money you have is the one you saved. And that's the one that guarantees your future. If you know what to do with it, which I'm going to talk about maybe two Sundays to come by the grace of God. If you know what to do with that savings, it's your life. It's your future. Mm -hmm. 